welcome back to Dropping the Needle, episode seven, your first episode for 2021. It's your boys, Pat Artist, Adam Knitch. Uh, it's your first time checking this show out. Go ahead and hit that subscribe. Go ahead and hit all the notification stuff you like to do so you can see the episodes as they roll through. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> also, check out all the other stuff on uh, Quick Sixer Podcast does. And subscribe on all of the podcast platforms you like. Isn't that right, my boy, Adam Knitch? That's right. <laughs> hit that subscribe button. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Adam. Um, are we going bearded or are we going... Living uh, water. Just tried, I just spilled beer all over myself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all sticky over here, dude. A lot of that sticky boy. You know what I'm saying? Bearded iris or living waters? Uh, let's go living waters. Ooh. <clears throat> living, living waters. Okay. Okay. So living waters brewing. This is uh, this is called. Fuck. Goes a twin, I guess. Uh, this is a birthday present from your girl, Brittany Fernandez, Brittany but spooky. It's a 6.0. Um, what kind of, what kind of beer is it? It's all unusual. Up. It's a Goza style cranberry with cranberry, marshmallow, and vanilla. 6.0. <clears throat> Glad you chose this one actually, cause this shit was getting warm. Is this supposed to be like a Christmas style beer or something? Like, or like, Ooh, I'll hold up. Bro, this shit's straight up. I'm not fucking with you. I might send you one of these. This right. shit smells like fucking uh uh what is that shit? Lucky charms. Yeah. Ooh, look at that. Pink. Yeah. That's nice. That's real nice. Very nice. <laughs> um <clears throat> okay, so for those of you tuning in, uh Dropping the Needle is Quick Sixer Podcasts music and pop culture co- uh, podcast or show, I guess you could call it just a show. Yeah. Um, we gotta start talking. We gotta start talking about pop culture and stuff more too. The, if we're gonna we do, we do, <laughs> we do. It's cool. We got um, a lot. We got a lot to talk about. It's okay. We do for this particular one. We do. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, pop culture stuff. Maybe we can do another thing. Fuck it. It's 20, 2022 already. We can do whatever we want. Yeah. Hmm. Hold on. Let's get a quick, quick sit. Look at this purple drink. Purple Dude. stuff all in my cup. Purple, I'm rolling is it purple? Is it really purple? Is it just red? I can't tell. Like, no, nah, bro. It's purple. Yeah. Here. See, look. If we get close, it's like more of a pink purple. Oh, yeah. Fuchsia is a is a word I'd say. Fuchsia. I'm still drinking that. Hobbies included. Mm. <laughs> Ooh. Bro, it's a it's a lip liquor on this one. A lip liquor, <laughs> a li- lip liquor, a li- 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 liquor. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so <laughs> this episode, we're dropping the needle. We're talking about a uh, <clears throat> we're talking about the 69th greatest album of all time according to the 2020 list from Rolling Stone magazine, which is. Well, don't even say it. Let's just talk about for a second how awesome it is that it's at number 69. <laughs> I know. Like, also, more fuck yes. You know, like, <laughs> come on. 69. That's what's up. Uh, shout out to you before we announce what this is, because that's dope. Um, <clears throat> this is the third album by said artist. Uh, the first two, I didn't know shit about until we watched a certain documentary we'll talk about in a little bit. I don't know about you. Did you know anything about that? I didn't know at all. Know about what? The, the first, the first two albums that she did. Oh yeah, yeah a little bit. Yeah. <clears throat> also, I think I don't know. Yeah, we'd have to go back in our our log so far, but I think our first Canadian. Yeah. You know, our friends from the north. Yeah. Because um, also, I think this era also was. I think there was a behind the music. Do you remember that? vh ones oh, behind the music, bro. <laughs> bro. Go and check it. Going, maybe you'll probably look it up on YouTube now. But like, yeah. Yeah. dude, behind the music, bro. Mid nineties, late nineties. Behind the behind the music. Behind the music. <laughs> behind the music was my favorite fucking show. I swear yeah. to God, I saw every single one, especially. I mean, some of them I even watched two, like two times. You know, you know, yeah. we can, we can go back to it. You know, like 
you know, fuck you, meatloaf. Pinko, yeah. We watched a couple times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I will do anything for love. I don't want to do that. Going, <clears throat> going back to the meatloaf story, did I even say that it was a girl? <laughs> no. <laughs> you didn't. You did not say it was a girl. That's fucking amazing. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god actually go and check out instagram uh for adam's meatloaf story it's just titled fuck you meatloaf so go check yeah. that out if you want to hear that clip or, or you can check out the november episode of this show which is in our playlist in the youtube channel you should be subscribed to all right adam <clears throat> i want you to unveil this is 2021 20 i asked it's 2022 <laughs> fuck uh, yeah, fuck, fuck these last couple of years. That's what uh, I know, right? Too, bro. But um, since we're in 2022, you're, th- you're doing year three, you're year three of the pandemic, bro. Oh, Lord. All right. Fuck it. We go three years deep. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I haven't seen you physically since 2019, I think. Yeah, September 2019. Damn, bro. That's fucking lame. Um, but we're in a new year. We've been doing this show for a while. I want you to introduce this for this this album. Because <clears throat> I think I've fucking done it the other times. All right. Well, coming in at number 69 on the Rolling Stone. <laughs> Top 500 is yeah. Jagged Little Pill by Alanis Morissette. Cheers, Alanis. What year? 95? 95, 96, 96? 95. 95. 95. She's the fucking goat. You already know it. Um, yeah. So third album by Canadian singer Alanis Morissette released June 13th, 1995 through Maverick. Third album. Yes, third, third album. album. <laughs> but really the first album. Yes, first American album. Let's say, well, first United <clears throat> States America, American through the United States album um maverick was um which if you watch there's there's a documentary we're going to talk a lot about throughout this episode called jagged which is on hbo you can go check it out and uh i didn't know this but maverick is a um it's it's an american entertainment company founded 1992 by madonna and some other people but um it's owned and operated at a Warner Music. And uh yeah, she got her first fucking or her American break on Maverick, which was cool. Um <clears throat> first album that was released worldwide. That's why I was saying I didn't know about these other two before this documentary. Also, the first two were fucking pop princess type shit. Like, what the fuck is it? You know, like it's so weird. But uh, it says her first two were dance pop sounds and they're called Alanis <laughs> in 91 and now is the time in 92. These are both when she's a teenager. Okay. Alanis released this album when she was 21 years old. Can you imagine releasing a yeah. fucking banger like this <clears throat> at night? 21 years old. Yeah. 21 years old. But I mean, yeah, writing that at 21 makes sense to I mean, me. This, that makes sense to me. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> living. I mean, you spent some time with me in L.A. Living in L.A. when she wrote this um, at 21, I feel like there's a lot of shit that you can you can kind of get out of that city when you're in that age range, yeah. early 20s, <clears throat> over like where you can fuck up or you can succeed, yeah, or you can fail like completely. And I think this album is all about all that stuff. It's a, uh, it's you know about That's love it's about fucking <clears throat> i mean fucking sometimes uh yeah. it, you know it's about you know standing up for yourself being there's uh, there's everything you know it, there's there's feminism in it there's there's a uh, sex positivity in it there's um uh, fucking questioning religion in it you know there's all sorts of stuff in this album yeah, it's heavy it's fully yeah heavy. It is fully loaded. And um, yeah, so anyways, she uh, she was she's also which is, this is kind of crazy, but she was a was a Nickelodeon kid for a 
for her early oh, yeah. life as a kid. <clears throat> so <clears throat> I think it's Nickelodeon, right? Right? Does that make that's right, right? I think so. That sounds familiar, but yeah. I should have probably done the research more on that, but <laughs> no, I feel like I read it and then I just forgot it because you know we're we're doing I mean full transparency. Yeah. Doing true I mean, two yeah. episodes As back to back. I'm kind of faded. <laughs> so um <laughs> um but yeah, dude, this uh so Jag Little Pill <clears throat> her first um album that released in the United States worldwide as well. Commercial success, obviously. Um Top the charts in 13 countries, sold 33 million copies worldwide. Okay. It's one of the best selling albums of all time. Uh, and she's the first Canadian to achieve double diamonds sales of an album. Wow. Um, it was nominated for nine Grammys and won five, including Album of the Year, uh, making Alanis the youngest artist to win the top honor at the time, which is fucking nuts, dude. Um, Yeah. uh, Now, I mean, as, as of 2020, this album's 25 years old. So it's 27 years old now, but 26, if you count the actual data came out Um, as we record this, but uh, dude, she did uh i mean this has turned been turned into a broadway play it won 15 tony awards including best musical uh and she did a uh oh she began a 20th 25th anniversary jagged little pill tour in 2020 but got postponed due to this bullshit pandemic that we're still fucking with year three year three you know Bow. Um just god man it's like <laughs> I know it could I be know. done <clears throat> fucking over it. Um but yeah dude um her and Glenn Ballard who you'll learn a lot about in that documentary we talked about wrote this album together um and it sounds like barely it sounds like they scrapped some money together to fly her out the second time to finish it and um yeah pitched this shit to the record company at Maverick and they took a chance and that's it, man. The rest is fucking history. Oh. Um, one fun fact, um, Taylor, the drummer of Foo Fighters was the touring drummer of this first tour, which they toured for like 18 months, I think, and yeah. toured the world. And really, yeah, fucking, it looks exactly the same. <laughs> exactly the same. <laughs> And uh, it that's so fucking cool that uh, he like that was his own his job before Foo Fighters, so it yeah. moved directly from Atlantis to Foo Fighters, which was very cool. And the other two but dudes, also, <clears throat> oh sorry, it also yeah. shows you too. That, so, so that's all good, but it just shows you too, like how uh, LA is like you know they're like it's a big town, but like in the '90s it wasn't so big yet. And like, I mean, I guess the people older than us probably understand that more, but maybe the young, younger people will understand it too, that like in the nineties, I mean, it's like, kind of was like, you had to network and stuff. So it was like, you know, they're all kind of, especially that time, like alternative was kind of all, they're all in the same pool of, you know, yeah, yeah. you got to keep it in like mind. Internet, you know, yeah. Yeah. You have SoundCloud. <laughs> yeah. You didn't have any of this SoundCloud or fucking Spotify or Apple music. You got to keep in mind, this is probably even before. <clears throat> That's got to be before like uh, pirated music and like LimeWire and all that bullshit. Um, uh, and what is it? What is it? Napster. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it, the, the craziest thing about this. So the other two dudes that toured with her, um, I think are now in Jane's Addiction, which is crazy. So like everybody that toured on this, this particular first album are still successful, which is awesome um and yes highly recommend go watching that hbo documentary jagged uh check it out it's fucking awesome and definitely it's one of my it's one of my favorite things i watched this year i think yeah i think so too actually i enjoyed every bit of it uh it's 
it gives you I wish the other episodes were better but oh what yeah yeah that's true that's <laughs> i wish true. there there's stronger episodes i mean that's fine but i mean yeah i don't care i mean like sad the juice world thing's sad but like i don't you know like i'm not i didn't watch that one yeah i didn't either i mean but then there's like a kenny g one too which is like kind of interesting but like you i mean i don't give a fuck about like, kenny g just, yeah yeah exactly whoever chose that was like what yeah is the dmx one good i didn't watch that one yet I haven't watched. yeah i watched a little bit of that one that was pretty it's actually pretty interesting because like that one was like a lot of like the same like what the uh Alanis morissette one was that it um shows a lot of behind the scenes so it was like a lot of like behind the scenes leading up before you know his yeah. tragic death so <clears throat> yeah it's cool to see him interaction you know interacting with his, some of his family and stuff and yeah dude he's got a big ass family fuck yeah um that dude has so many baby mamas he has like 16 kids too some shit like that um but yeah dude jagged uh jagged little pill <sighs> what is i mean where do you even start really um yeah if okay well all right, let's just start with the with the with the straight out the box right um you will start with you ought to know and bro this song i don't know if you haven't heard this song and just sung your fucking lungs out in the car and you're a you're a fucking psychopath probably <laughs> uh, 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 i think i think so um one of my first girlfriends <clears throat> was obsessed with this album obsessed, obsessed to the point where i didn't really know shit about Alanis morissette at the time but this girl was like on a different level about it to the point where when her follow-up album came out i was like oh this would be a perfect gift bought that shit for her and uh yeah she was psyched we broke up like two months later so that was cool <laughs> nice <laughs> yeah um also also another side note um alanis one of the dopest shows i've ever seen live like straight yeah, i was gonna ask have you seen her because I, I still haven't seen her but oh dude it's amazing and did uh where was it at like was it by ourselves <clears throat> or was that a festival or it was at uh music fest and oh, okay. in memphis she was one of the headliners of i think 2018 or 2019 and i think we okay, went back yeah. to back years and dude she she comes out and you know she's been partying a little bit but <laughs> like you can you can tell you can even yeah. you like you're like oh shit she's been getting in you know and she comes out and just fucking crushes it like it's not even yeah. like like you know when you know when you see like um rock stars in movies and stuff and they're like walk out like they're the f- hardest motherfuckers on earth yeah the, she walks out like she's the hardest motherfucker on that stage and she is so it's like <laughs> That's all right uh at that particular um festival if anybody who's listening gets to go you can you can get really close to those stages like it's not hard yeah and no, um <clears throat> we were maybe 20 people back from the stage like really close like i have some dope pictures but like it was just awesome, dude. Like she's that's cool. She's just <clears throat> she's sounds exactly like you think she's gonna sound and just puts on a show, dude. She's not boring. She she's all about it. She gets the crowd into it. It's just great. Man. Yeah. Well, it's cool too, because like she seems to be one of those artists that like, you know, she knows what's like you know her bread and butter or whatever and like she does that and is happy to do it and like no you know what i mean but it still does it to where she ha- you know what i mean like still executes it just as like the first day it came out you know and not just like half-assing it and like yeah oh it's been 25 years you know i'm just here to you know collect the check and go home yeah no, she's still into it like yeah um when i when we saw her i think it was right before or right after her newest album came out <clears throat> and she played like a song or two off of that. But most of it, I feel like if you see one of these type of artists or like even bands that were or 20, 30 years deep into this shit, they're going to play their hits. Like you're saying, like the bread and butter mm. and they're going to play them good. 
you know they've been yeah. playing forever so they're gonna do that but then they're gonna sprinkle in some new shit you know and yeah. i'm okay with that you know that's like a beer break or whatever you want to go see the you don't like the new songs yeah. or whatever go get Just a drink stand in line for the porta potty <laughs> there you go take a piss <clears throat> i'm cool with that um but yeah man it's like the hits on this fucking album so you ought to know hand in my pocket ironic you learn hand head over feet all i really want like just dude just crushing the fucking yeah. charts and like i feel like you could turn on the radio any day in any city in the u.s to this day and here you ought to know or hand in my pocket yeah or I'm on the grocery store. <clears throat> yeah. The target. Like, bro, these are these are songs that are not going away anytime soon. And um, I was talking to Meg about this album. And I was telling her, I was like, yeah, we're going to we're, we're probably going to do Atlantis is uh, Jack a little pill for an episode. And she was like, it's about time you picked a woman. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> I agree. But uh, Which we're is not that many because in. what? It's it's funny because I actually listen to a lot of women artists like you know yeah. like indie artists and Chelsea that gives me shit because like is this another woman artist you're trying to introduce me to? <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, and that's the thing though. I, like I fuck with a lot of women <clears throat> artists too. It's like, but you, I, I guess with this particular one, it's just uh, there's something there's something about it that just is well, the, the reason we pick albums it. on. Yeah, the reason we pick albums on this show is because they're timeless. They're not. They're not. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Necessarily because they're a certain gender or sex or whatever. Um, but the album in general is timeless. So, Jagged Little Pill is one of those things where it's it it re it's it's good from front to back. I listened to it literally three times today, and. Nice. While I was doing some work and stuff, and it fucking slaps, dude. Like it's yeah. it's it's so good. I even like I like the beat, like the tracks that aren't radio tracks. Well, yeah, because the thing is, it's a cohesive album. It's you know, it's one of those albums that's like you know, it's a masterpiece in the sense that like it's every track is like it leads to the next one, you know. Mm-hmm. And um. And I mean, the lyrics alone, I mean, just the lyrics are so low. I mean, that's for me, it's like music is all about like I, I'd pick a band over like if you're able to sing and like write lyrics over, you know, playing music, you know, you just mm. fucking like sing the lyrics. And if it's like loaded lyrics like that, you know, like that yeah. does it more for me than. <clears throat> OK, guitar solo I mean, or... there's um, I don't know. It, there's different stuff that, that picks up for me on different bands, but like. <clears throat> There's a song on this album that I think is interesting. You, um, if you listen to it, listen to the whole thing. Uh, there's different things you're going to pick up on as you, if you watch the Jagged documentary, right? Like we've been talking about. And there's a song on here called um, Forgiven, I think. I think it's Forgiven. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's forgiven. Um, there was a certain point where they were touring with people like Radiohead. And this song, I know, I know they this song was out before they met Radiohead, but it yeah. sounds in the beginning like a Radiohead song, which is crazy. You know, that's nuts. Yeah. Yeah. And uh there's I mean, there's just like random shit in this. It's like makes it like oh my god like dude well, that's what's crazy too is i mean she's the you know the kind of like the the uh the introduction you know she like, introduced like kind of that's her like style of gr- like female grunge or like you know feminism and all that stuff because like i think she was before like liz fair uh mm-hmm. you know and then there's all these other female artists that come after that you know yeah liz fair what uh not not garbage probably garbage uh uh you probably could even throw in um what's it called uh fuck hole stuff like that yeah um yeah dude it's just the cranberries maybe even 
Mm. Um, this might be like 80s, though, I think. No, I don't think so. I think, I think it's early 90s, Maybe. just like this. But um, also tragic death. Um, yeah. But yeah, dude, there's just like this album kind of means a lot to different people. And I feel like means different things to different types of people. And I feel like that it, this this particular album meant a lot more to me later in my life so far than it did when it came out. Um, I mean, for context, I was eight years old when this came out. So it's like, yeah, what are you going to do? I mean, you too. Well, what's, what's funny is like, my, so when it came out, my mom and aunt were like obsessed with this album. So, you know, so like yeah. I would be in the car with my mom my mom would be like jamming this album. <laughs> <laughs> You're just sitting there so, I mean, like, yeah, it's like, yeah, it's like, oh, this was dope. Yeah. <laughs> That's fucking awesome. So, now yeah, I see why your mom, video. now I see why your mom let us go to Bonnaroo. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't mom know, likes it, this album. She likes Howard Stern, which is funny too, because like if you, it doesn't mention that documentary, but like Howard Stern is like, kind of like helped her career out a lot too. But like oh, really? dropping her. Yeah. Yeah. But like, you know, I could do it again. I think he did like an interview with her and stuff like when that album came out and it kind of, that's how more people like more dudes and stuff got like, and you know, you know, yeah. oh, she's actually pretty cool. Like that's yeah. just interesting too. If you look at the documentary and they show the shows and stuff, like how many guys are actually there versus women. I was tripping, dude. I was so <laughs> many guys there. Yeah. Um, that makes sense though. That, I mean, you, you see, yeah, you watch the documentary and then I think she, I think that interview, part of the interview is in there. Uh, yeah, I think it is. I'm not mistaken, too. but she did. So K Rock um, is an LA music station, a radio station that kind of breaks a lot of people. And I guess back in yeah. that day, they were the fucking the the peak of where you could go, yeah. and that's what broke this. So you ought to know yeah. is played on that station, and then people well, it is kind of crazy. Crazy. Too, if you think if you think about it too, just you know, I mean, like we we grew up in Memphis. But, you know, like even that, but like as a kid and even like, you know, um, it's like high school and in early college, it's like, yeah, like even early college for us, like a lot of stuff did break through K-Rock. I mean, everybody kind of knew K-Rock as like the, oh, yeah, yeah. Well, it's got to go there first before, it, you know. Exactly. Actually, That's this is kind of big. interesting. <clears throat> I didn't know what the fuck K-Rock was until um, I moved. I, no, I visited a friend named Justin in LA to like get a feel for what LA was. Mm -hmm. And he turned on K rock as soon as uh, I got in the car and I was like, what the fuck is this station? He, Cause it was, it was kind of like bang. And I was like every song yeah. I was like, this is sick. Oh yeah. I mean, it, it's like, yeah, it's whatever is like, you know, it's current. It's not just like, you know, it's not like what we have with 93 X and it's like half of it's from, you know, yeah, the yeah. 90s. <laughs> 2005. Yeah. It's like, it's a song from 95. Yeah. I mean, they might throw in a track here and there. That's like throwback like one one an hour you know yeah but uh yeah k-rock is fucking jamming and i was like dude what is this he's like oh dude this is k-rock and you not know k-rock eggs i was like yeah uh <laughs> i don't fucking know like i'm skateboarder from memphis i don't fucking listen to this like what are you talking about and uh yeah so that kind of broke me on that you know shout out justin for that shit but um uh, weird story about that dude but i got but <laughs> Uh, I, I'll hit you with it real quick. Real <laughs> story time I'm on Pat. blast. <laughs> it's your boy. Um, so Justin lived in this apartment, and he told me we were in the same uh, film uh, program at U of M, and the same one that you you were in and Drew yeah. was in, and <clears throat> uh, Justin got this job, and I was like, oh, sick, you know, like that's that's super cool like when you go out there maybe i can come visit right he's like oh yeah that'd be fucking awesome and so he's in the middle of this job and i go in out and visit for a weekend and he stay he's in this apartment he's like subletting a room or whatever there's like two other roommates in there right and i was actually you saw this this apartment this is the wildest shit i don't know if i ever told you this uh so we're staying there's an apartment, this three bedroom apartment. There's in Sherman Oaks. And it was the same apartment I saw. Mm -hmm. 
So it's so like you took that you took that apartment over? I'm I'm getting to it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so um he he some shit didn't work out and he he left LA. And I moved to LA like the next year. And I ended up subletting a room with somebody in Hollywood. And they lived in Hollywood for like six months. And it came up. I was on a show with a few people and they were like, Oh shit, we're all looking for apartments. What's all let's all look for apartments together. And I was like, all right, cool. Uh, let's drive around and look for some fucking signs, you know, like availability. Yeah. And I was like, man, I wonder like legit. I was, it was at night and I was like, I wonder. <laughs> Swing by like I just had this <laughs> feeling, dude, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so we just go driving through Sherman Oaks and um we pull we pull up to where this apartment is and uh actually I'm gonna hit you with something real quick. I'm gonna hit you with something. What, what's that, bro? Uh fuck oh god damn. It's um oh, fuck me. Um, one sec, sorry, bro. <laughs> it's just gonna be like twenty minutes of no, oh, no, no. Man. Oh man, fuck <laughs> me. <laughs> oh man, what is it? What is it? Oh yeah. It's her. That's what it is. Yeah, bro. That's what it is. <laughs> Forty four. Uh. Oh shit! No, it was um, I think it's forty four. Yeah, yeah, forty four eleven Ventura Canyon Boulevard or Avenue, and yeah, and Sherman Oaks. Always like, please, please don't visit me. Go and check it out. Go and knock on the door. Two oh seven. Um, it was a pretty cool place though. <clears throat> I liked it. It was cool. Yeah. So apartment two oh seven. It was upstairs in the back. Um, it was hot as fuck because it was over the parking lot, and there's no AC in that apartment so that's most of la huh yeah but anyway so we move into this apartment i we we drive past right and i'm like oh fuck i wonder there's a, a like a for lease sign outside and i was like oh fuck i wonder if it's the same one we call the thing it's the same one that justin was in i was like oh bro i think i gotta <laughs> do, i gotta do it <laughs> And so we we rent this apartment, this three bedroom apartment, me and these two people. And uh, shout out Tony. And uh, I had the option to be in the exact same room that this motherfucker let me stay in <laughs> on the floor. And I was like, "This is like, wild, bro." Yeah. How the tables have turned. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Instead, the turntables have turned. I have the turntables, <laughs> you know. Uh, and anyways, I ended up staying in his uh drug dealer roommate's room because it had an air conditioning unit. Nice. So it's it just it only smelled like weed occasionally. Occasionally, it really did. Uh, but uh, I'm sure. it was the only only room in the apartment that had uh air conditioner besides the living room. No, that, that was a pretty cool apartment though for like a three bedroom. Mm-hmm. But anyways, yeah, that's the story about that. But um, yeah, dude, K Rock was uh introducing me then, and it stayed on my radio thing on my in my car the whole time I lived there. So that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out yeah. to like radio stations still like doing their thing. Yeah. It's tough, but there's still some getting it out there yeah i'm fully convinced there's a radio station here that just runs out of a garage um but i'm not <laughs> I'm not positive though what is it? it's just what a conspiracy is it? you know <laughs> it's called it's, it's like what an you... oldie station called hippie radio oh. in nashville oh, okay i wonder and if it's like the oldie station that's here in new orleans maybe but it, it there's always two people <clears throat> it's pam and tony they're the hosts pam and, pam and tony yeah, and they had, and I'm like, bruh, they're the only ones there, and they had this like fill in person recently, and I'm like, bruh, oh, God, <laughs> I was like, bro, I think this is just like their neighbor. I think I, yeah. oh, and then like I came hey, up Pam, with the, hey Tony, yeah, yeah, 
No, well, I came up. We're coming in from next yeah, door. Yeah. I came up with the <laughs> with a the theory that they, these fuckers just li- just like do this shit out of a garage, and yeah. hosting, you know, like the the the, ho- the the guest host was just like their neighbor. They came over to like watch their cats, <laughs> you know. Yeah. But, yeah. Well, I don't know. Shout out to him and Tony. Oh, but anyways, you said that your uh, your mom and your aunt were all about this album. Like, uh, yeah. is there anything like? Partic- have you ever talked to your mom or aunt about it? Yeah, my my mom still talks about it. Like, my mom still listens to it pretty regularly. I guess when she's like cleaning the house and shit. <laughs> I was like, mm-hmm. so. But I mean, no, because I think it was just that time and they were like young, you know, like. When I was eight, they were probably like, what, so, like, late, or uh, I guess in their 30s, you know, so, mm-hmm. early 30s. Yeah. <clears throat> People so, had kids young back then, bro. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was saying. That's why I was like, you know, probably, you know, around that time. I mean, she was like, you know, close to our age, you know, now, like. That's crazy. You know, so, like, if you imagine if that album came out, we'd probably still, we'd be banging that thing right now, you know, <laughs> like. I'm banging that thing right now. But, uh Yeah. It's, you know, it's, I've talked to Meg about this a lot of times, like, um, her mom, or she says that her mom and her used to listen to it, like, every day on the way home from yeah. school. I was thinking, too, it was like, it was kind of like my mom and sister listened to it, too, you know what I mean? Like, so. Mm-hmm. It's just, I mean, just in general, dude, it's just, it has a lot I mean, of. It's like, plus, it's so strong. I mean, it's like, you know, I was like, that's what I was like, I'm like, you know, happy with my mom, like, you know, listening to that with my sister versus like, you know, like. Taylor Swift. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know uh, Britney Spears or oh shit, Britney you know, which was I mean, hard still right there. Too, yeah. yeah, yeah. But now probably a year you know or two I mean? later, Britney Spears. Yeah. Um. Yeah, man. I don't. It's 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 fun to go back to in these times and like kind of revisit the the themes of this album. Like check it out in a. I hate to say it, but I'm like a more woke lens, you know, air quotes on that. But just to, to be more, you know, acclimated with what the fuck's going on in the world. And some of the shit that she talks about <clears throat> is shit that, you know, women have had to deal with forever. And she was mm-hmm. fucking, she, you know, screaming at the top of her yeah. lungs. Everyone yeah. here on this one. Which is is great, you know. And open, well, you know, and open a door for every everyone else to do this, to follow suit, you know. Yeah, which you know, take some fucking some some low hangers, bro. Like she was, she was killing it, and it's it's funny to think like she's she's killed it for fucking three decades now, which is like for anybody, yeah, is and in, is insane, but. It, and what's weird too, like that album too, is like it's kind of like grunge, but it's not grunge. It's kind of like its own thing. That's what makes it so timeless is the fact that it was like you can kind of try to put it in the pigeonhole of like you know grunge and like with the Nirvana yeah. and like you know all that stuff, but it's not. You yeah, know? put it in the the Nirvana Pearl Jam fucking yeah all that stuff. But you know, there's like there's some stuff on there like like not the doctor and wake up. Are kind of they're two of my favorite songs off of it, honestly. Yeah. Um. The the two last songs, if you're looking at them, mm-hmm. but um, it's just like there's a weird build to one of them. I I feel like it's the wake up one. Yeah, I think it's wake up. There's a weird build to it, and it's like it goes slow, hypes, hypes, it peaks, and then drops down again, and then does it a few more times, and you're like. You feel like you you just ran like a fucking race or something. You're like, holy shit! Like, yeah. What the fuck did this song just do to me? Um, but yeah, man, it's <clears throat> and I mean, you learn is probably. Yeah. I don't know. It's one of those songs, dude. It's, it's just it's just you know you know there's there's sometimes you just think you're like man that's just one of those songs like you can't. It's just good, you know. No way around yeah. it. But ironic's probably my favorite though. Oh, ironic's amazing. Um, you ought to know just fucking slaps though. Like, yeah. God damn. Sure. That shit comes on. It's we're going in. 
I don't care who's in the yeah. car. We're going in on it. Full on fucking group karaoke style. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> have you seen um uh, that was so funny about this? Do you have you seen Book Smart? You've seen Book Smart, mm-hmm. have you? That scene. Debatably. <laughs> well, I think but dude, Book Smart is fucking amazing. It's so good. It's so underrated, dude. It's so underrated. It's also it's it's funny too, like oh, so now we're talking about some pulp culture stuff, but yeah, it's funny that that book smart there's been two movies that so there's I was gonna say that um how what's the I just draw a blank of what I was trying to say, but super super bad kind of yeah. opened the door for like those movies like Book Smart. Book Smart's yeah. one and then um have you seen uh, Good Boys? Good Boys is a, is another Seth Rogen joint. <laughs> dude, it's uh, so but it's there's funny also it's super bad, dude. It's yeah, I think it's funny. funnier than super bad. It's funnier than super but, bad. And then there's like what Edge of Seventeen, which is fucking amazing. Yeah. I think you can catch that on Netflix mm-hmm. still. Um <clears throat> Edge of Seventeen is fucking amazing. I forgot about I forgot about Edge of Seventeen. That's the Haley Steinfeld's probably best role ever. Like yeah. for real. Also great and great in Hawkeye. Oh my god. Yeah. Um you, you're digging that show. Oh, loving it. I haven't watched the the New newest episode. Oh shit, bro! Well, at the time of recording this, episode four is out, and Adam yeah. has not watched it. Here's a spoiler: three. Oh shit! Four, four. Yeah. All right, you gotta watch them tonight. Are you and Chelsea watching yeah. them? Yeah, we are. But like, she's. I mean, she's been like, you know, just working so much that, like, you know, she yeah, gets yeah. home and it's like, go yeah, go ahead bad. and watch them both tonight. Episode four got a fun little cameo. Oh yeah. Yeah, if you've it's seen actually, it's been Marvel surprisingly, shit. it's been so much better than what I thought it would be. It's so good. Also, it makes like Hawkeye a, such Hawkeye a more interesting character, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but Haley, I love Christmas fucking theme. love Haley Steinfeld. Oh my god, um, her shit, it. her Dickinson show <laughs> on eight, Apple Plus, amazing. Oh, you watch that? It's so good. It's so fucking good. Check it out. Um, it's like oh. it's like. If fucking Emily Dickinson was, if they spoke like we speak now, yeah, okay, gotcha. It's fucking, it's dude, it's fucking awesome. Gotcha. Yeah, you need you need to get on that succession though, bro. Mm. There's a lot of shit I need to get on. You know what I'm saying? Maybe um, with the like succession. I know. I watched the first episode and cringed the fuck out of me, bro. I, I couldn't. <laughs> you gotta keep on. No, you gotta keep on. Like, bro, I got it's so like, cringe so though. Much funny. I was like, it oh gets my so God. funny though. It gets so funny. Cousin Greg, dude, it's the best. Bro, like. I got so <laughs> cringed out though. I was like, oh <laughs> God. <laughs> They're terrible people. That's the fun. That's the shit. Like that's the thing about it. It's like another show about terrible people. Yeah, but. I know. I know. I know. It's like an opposite office. You know, it's a show about great people. You're good though. Yeah. Bro, I don't know about you, but like two beers I've been hitting on pretty, pretty hit, pretty heavy. You know what I'm saying? Well, dude, you drank like eight percent. Luckily, I just kind of kept it a little light with uh, these six <laughs> percent. That goes the shit. I just it's included. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That goes the shit. It's I like just had. Uh, it's already We're done. Like you know. Spikes. If you watch our last episode, it took me a minute to drink that shit, but this one was hella quick. Yeah. <laughs> But anyway, um, oh god. Um, do you have anything else to say about this? About the album? Yeah. I don't know. Oh, well, I got some other shit about it. some pop culture shit. Um, no. <laughs> uh, Haley Steinfeld though. Kind of thing. <laughs> Good. Didn't you know she released an album? Oh yeah. Hmm. Like. Okay. Uh, I, don't I, know. I mean, like, shit, though. you say that name, but it's like, it's one of those names. I'm like, I know who she is. I could, if you told me, like, that's how they stuff up, like, okay. <laughs> sure. <laughs> you know, she was in Pitch you. Perfect <laughs> 2 and 3. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I like her a lot. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> What's up, Haley? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, no, she's dope. Uh, I don't Hawkeye. know, man. I don't got too much to say, too much else to say about Jackie the Little Pill. Um, it's it's just one of those things. Like I feel like this is one of those albums 
I'll be listening to forever just because it's good. Like it's, it's timeless. It doesn't fucking, there's some, I was thinking about timeless music uh, the other day because I was watching the three, six mafia first bone thugs versus, and, uh, you know, they got that song, uh, Oh, fuck. What the fuck is that song? It's about like... The thug is ruggish, bud. <laughs> no, no, no. It's a 3-6 song. I'm going to look it up real quick. <laughs> thug is ruggish, bud. Dude, fuck. That's, like, that's the only good song they have. No, it's not. The first of the month is the best song Dude, they have. That's that's the only song I think that's good, but... But I mean, that's the thing is I never really listened to us. I was like, dude, this is like no competition for three. No, no three, no competition at all. No. Oh, so I was listening to, oh, so I was watching that, that fucking, well, me and you were live chatting that fucking. Yeah. We should have uh, done, done a podcast on that alone. We should have live fucking brought, <laughs> live that's done what we should thing. do tonight. We should stay up all night tonight and do the, uh, free Larry Hoover. <laughs> oh, fuck. Here we go. Free Larry Hoover. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. That, that Kanye Drake thing Benefit, uh, yeah but uh, Larry Hoover shout out Apple or shout out to, uh, Amazon Prime it's like free Larry Hoover but Amazon Prime uh, uh let's get that back yeah right <laughs> <laughs> nah no I was thinking so it, it, it spawned me listening to uh uh the fucking uh three six mafia central's playlist on Apple music and I was like all right you know I'm gonna check this out so uh, of course, I've listened well, to it first before, before you go but... in. Before you go in on that, like, let's. So I'm gonna say this. Okay, so you motherfuckers with your app, with your Spotify, you know, here in review, it's like Apple Music. We get lossless audio plus the Adobe Atmos. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and we get the Essentials playlist. Yeah, y'all get a year in review. It's like, oh, cool. It's like shit you already know. It's like your top five albums are the same top five albums you've listened to for the last five years. <laughs> Adam's hot cool. take. Here you go. <laughs> sure, we're gonna have to do that every month. Adam's hot take of the month. No, um, hot take, hot take. Hot take, hot take. Um, so this song, Two Way Free. All right. Feature in the chat. Uh I was thinking about like timeless songs and how some songs from like particularly three six don't fucking age bro and uh two way freak is one of those and it's not one they yeah. played during the during the fucking show but it's all about fucking <clears throat> beepers and pagers and shit so i was yeah. like oh my god and like i guess texting at early texting and shit at that time yeah. but can you even imagine dude like trying to play one of those songs right now like being a person on stage talking about pagers and fucking dude even because you're not you don't smoke weed but even listening to like um where's the bud yeah it's like <laughs> it's just so outdated dude <laughs> there's like some shit in there that's like so of the time you know you're just like what the fuck like, are you talking about it's like, yeah, yeah. Dude, cheese is like a strain from like straight up ninety five, dude. Like, oh my god, this man, the weed is storing <laughs> over here. Oh my god. But then there's some other shit in here that's like, well, actually, like you know, there's tons of shit in here that's like you can't like, like Bin Laden weed. That shit's probably not going to register for anybody. That's yeah, no, yeah, that uh, push, yeah, yeah. Like, bro, no one that is under. 25 years old is going to know what the fuck you're talking about. Maybe oh, even 30, yeah. like for real. Yeah. But I, I don't know. It was just like when we what's thought about like, what was crazy. Like the thing was, was crazy too, is what I was going to say is I've been telling you like off the podcast, but like, you know, the, I got know some kids that are like, you know, they're like mid twenties, 25, 26. And it's like, they're like, Oh man, I know about that. Uh, six mafia. And they're like, you know, stoked on it. And like, I'm going to go see them in Miami at this festival or whatever, you know? So it's like, that's, what's interesting too, is to see like how it's, you know, creating that, you know, that 25 year olds now are listening to this shit. That was cool in the nineties, you know, early two thousands. Cause they were like, kids, yeah. you know, it's just, it's yeah. When you, when we talk about that, it trips me out. Cause it's like, I remember us listening to three, six one and like being real into it, like heavy, yeah. 
heavy into it when like like probably what 2004 something like that yeah and we were working at sonic is our like we're 16 years old yeah and... i remember senior year senior year dude we remember we skipped like it was like senior skip day or whatever and we skipped we went to fucking cat's music and so we? shout out to cat's music yeah if you know a cat about cat's music oh shit cat's music was the like local record store um in memphis and uh we bought uh i bought a black keys album magic potion 2006 oh my and then, god and then i bought we bought or maybe, yeah maybe i already had it but it was uh um uh the three six mafia album most unknown or whatever not yeah most not most uh most known unknown yeah 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 that was before last to walk that was before i had uh that had uh I uh, gotta stay fly. Yeah, yeah, that was the, that was that one. The dance that song. On on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that hidden track. That shit was hard. Uh, bruh, I, dude, I can't even remember this. I don't remember that at all. But I know you drove because I didn't have a car. Yeah, no, but that yeah, we went back. Like we like skipped and then we went back for like the last period or something. That makes sense. So, like, yeah, did yeah. but <laughs> maybe we had a test or something. I don't know. Yeah. But uh, that makes sense. I don't know. We were, we were smoking a lot of weed at that time. I don't know. I think it might have. We might have been picking up dill though. Maybe. We, I don't know. We were doing some shit back then. I was, it, was a, it was a wild time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, bro. I don't, dude. That's dope. I can't. I I have no recollection of that except for yeah. you buying that Black Keys album. Yeah. Which is cool. Um. Yeah, man, but it's like it's so wild. Like thinking about kids that are getting into three six and stuff now, or even through like just Gangsta Boo's fucking features yeah, on no. stuff. Yeah. Also, I'm just gonna lay this out there for the whole internet to hear. But Gangsta Boo's the most underrated rapper in Three Six Mafia, straight up for sure. It it, it, it kind of bums me out too because it's like I don't like there's got to be something going on between all of them because i mean like why doesn't you know juicy j and them like oh like i saw him on a podcast recently like oh yeah gangsta boo she's underrated it's like but hey motherfucker why don't you ever help her out and mix like fucking beats for her you know like, yeah kill it together like that's what's yeah. so weird it's like y'all sit there and say that you're like yeah well, you know she's great but like even in the, even in the verses like they didn't really like juicy didn't really they seemed to be like kind of fucking with her you know yeah it's kind of yeah. sad like yeah because she's yeah she's definitely gets it dude like she's yeah she's with the shit like for sure she, she's definitely the most underrated official member uh i think the yeah. most underrated member and i mean shout out to all like, the jewels shout out yeah. shout out to run the jewels or put her on dude they know what's up you know yeah the most underrated rapper in the whole hypnotized hypnotized camp posse is project pat straight up dude has not gotten yeah. his due even though he's been on like fucking bangers with Drake and like, uh, you know, the dude is, I mean, chicken head and some other, and a couple of other songs yeah. are just their cultural things, you know, Shout but, out, uh, in, what, used to come into Whole Foods and get that green juice. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> yeah, do <Dude>, project that <laughs> it is the dude. Like he's the fucking dude. And like one of the dudes I worked with was like saw him in the whole thing. He's like, what up, Mr. Player, don't play. And he's just like, oh, what up, bro? <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm saying. He's real as fuck, you know? I mean, that's, yeah. I mean, that's, that's thing is shout out to anybody from like Memphis, like that's in the rap game because it's like, I mean, Young Dolph, like rest in peace, dude. Like, you know, the fact that they still, they're about it, man. They're like down to earth. They, you know, they're not like, oh my God, I made all these millions. I'm going to like just vamp out and, you know, never come back. And, you know. Yeah. And shit that young dog came back to like help out you know give out turkeys and shit you know that's mm-hmm. what's fucked up it's like he's you know, trying to help out the city yeah there's no one else helping on Memphis that's for sure no some bullshit it's a wreck dude that city's a wreck bro it's a wrap on that city dude, it really is it's I mean everyone used to tell me like as we were growing up or whatever I, you know go visit family and shit and, like meet random people they'd be like oh bro i heard memphis pretty gnarly i'm like 
but I get, I, I guess, you know. See, you never like you always kind of stay out in Bartlett and kind of, you know. I mean, for a hot minute, like, but like, yeah. I mean, I slept I mean, in Bartlett, but we were always like, even in high school, we were all over the place for shows and yeah, fucking and I mean, skating. Like, you know, but, like the second I got a living. What are you going to say? I was just saying, like, for me, like, living out in, like, you know, Midtown or U Mary and stuff, just that alone, like, you would always see shit going down, you know? Yeah. Well, I like, feel driving like... from, like, Midtown to, like, even FedEx, like, I mean, that's... That's gnarly. Drive, but still, it's, like, you know... It's heavy. Yeah, see, yeah. See some shit. You do. Yeah, yeah. No, I feel like the the minute I got a license is when uh, I really learned what Memphis was about. Yeah. Um. Because, you know, growing up skateboarding in Memphis was a a whole different game. Like, if you're going to find some cool shit to skate, sometimes it's in it's in the fucking hood, you know? Yeah, everything's, yeah, life Uh, life for life, bro. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) yeah. So, like, you know, we go and skate some places that I I definitely wouldn't go and hang out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you go in the daytime, you go when for a little while. You know, you don't no. go for the whole day and you don't, you lock your car. You you know where your shit's at. It was more of like a, I don't know, man. It's just, it going back there recently is, it just feels different. You know, it feels gnarlier, yeah. honestly. Yeah. Maybe it's just being a kid and like, you know, when I say kid, you know, like 16 to 22, but like maybe it's being a kid and like not really recognizing how fucking gnarly it was but i feel like it's gnarlier now i really do no for sure um but anyways um i feel like atlanta going back to atlantis real quick wrap it up you know what i'm saying um atlantis is timeless this album, we're going to feature some more female albums this year, 2022, but um, specifically one I think I want to do from, I don't know yet, but one of these. I got a couple, the, I got a couple I could do, female. Yeah, I feel like I, I, I really want to, but this particular one, if you haven't heard it, go and check it out. Uh, 1995's Jag a Little Pill. It's just, it's legit mostly hits that you've probably heard plus like some other songs that are just as good she could have released put on your favorite flannel and your favorite you know thrash denim yeah bro just you know (laughs) don't wash your hair for a couple days let's do this you know um but it's just it's one of those albums that like every song could have been on the radio but it wasn't yeah and it's fucking awesome so Go and check it out. Also, you made it to the end of this video, this podcast. Go ahead, hit subscribe. Check out the next version of this February 2022's episode. Uh, if it's a podcast service, subscribe too. That'd be dupe. That'd be, uh, that'd be dupe. dupe. <laughs> <laughs> that'd be dope. Don't dupe yourself. <laughs> Don't dupe yourself. But yeah, um, subscribe. Hit the notification stuff if you like that stuff. Uh, leave some comments if you suggest yeah. an album that'd be cool uh, yeah. somebody suggest one yeah give us some suggestions like let's let's know what you're into yeah maybe we'll do a, a fucking a month of just suggested albums that'd be cool like give yeah. us some new shit to listen to but uh adam you got anything else to say about uh linus morissette's jag a little bill no i don't think so i i, I just want to add that i want to see her and she uh she did a uh here she came to jazz fest a couple years ago and did an acoustic set Ooh, so that, that sounds, sounds nice. Interesting. But yeah, that's all I, I got to add to it. Yeah, if you get the chance, go and check her out. She's awesome. But this is dropping the needle. It's your boys, Bad Artist and Knitch. This is a quick sixer podcast. Go and check us out. Love you guys. We out. <laughs>